witch. He might be better than the rest of the fire. He beat your chest. He's a schoolboy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows around. Come enjoy the show. He's a schoolboy football. Three months of intense schoolboy football in Jamaica's urban area will resolve tonight in the crowning of a new champion in the Manning Cup. And as the sun sets on this December evening, it will be a new dawn for one of these schools here at the Mecca of Jamaica's football. It's Heidel High up against Mona High. The battle for the Manning Cup will begin in short order here at the National Stadium. We are on the cusp of showtime. First comes pressure, then of course the endeavor, and finally most precious, the moment and the relief which comes with it. Heidel will be looking for vengeance in no uncertain terms in a matchup with Mona last season they were trounced by eight goals to nil. A few things were said before and after the game, and I suggest that Heidel, they're going to make it a little bit personal on the field of play. Mona, they have gotten the better of Heidel in recent times, more often than not. But Heidel, they have developed quite a reputation this season, Chris Taylor, and we're looking forward to the battle tonight. Yeah, excellent stuff. When you look at Heidel individually, very talented, probably the most talented bunch. Lots of individual skill. It will be important for Devon Anderson today to see them put that together as a team. And that is what Mona have done well this season. They have relied on each other, as I said, very close-knit family is Mona. And just how they have played together, sharing the ball, sharing the goals, sharing the moments. So, yeah, that would be interesting to see how the individual talent of Heidel comes up against the team effort of Mona. And there are quality players on both these teams that are expected to take a starring role tonight. Yeah, for sure. And as I said, both teams very excited about this moment. Tiffany Anderson, of course, it's not the first for Heidel. Back in 2012, they were there, lost to St. George's. But for Devon Anderson, in his role here, it's a first. Of course, Heidel did lift the Walker Cup as well in 2018. For Mona, it's a first on all fronts. And they've gone from strength to strength from seasons ago when he took over Craig Butler. And a school that has produced quite a bit of talent over the years, but they've always gone elsewhere eventually to further it. He has been able to keep them, grow them, and add more to them. And many would have expected Craig Butler to wave a magic wand when he first came to Mona. It hasn't been the case. It has been steady increase, though, in terms of uh, their performances each season. Yeah, and, and you look outside of even Jamaica in terms of how places build teams. It takes a while, a lot of times, for that chemistry, that belief, to, to, for, for the team to buy into your philosophy as a coach. So it's no surprise to me that he didn't win initially. That, that's very rare, that a team is, is, is formulated Boom, and the first year they win, it does take a while, but he has steadily gotten better. And now he's in the final for the first time. So it's steady progress. And yeah, the, the, the chance is just as good as ever. But as far as the football is concerned, what are you anticipating? The type of game we'll see? I don't think we'll see the disparity that we've seen in the results before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mona has won so at 3 out of 5, and 8 nil and 3 1, so 11 1 on aggregate last season. That's not the kind of night tonight. And I think that, 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 that this Heidel team. Not only will put up a fight, I think Heidel is right in it. I think it's a very even call because, as I said, individually, I think some of these Heidel players are the best in the league. But sometimes they rely too much on that individual brilliance. And that's where, you know, that's where you kind of get the balance now with the Mona. You know, how can the team affect the individuals? But, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a much closer battle than, than one may think or history shows. We speak about Mona Pride a lot as we see Craig Butler coming down the, the tunnel. But if we just mention Heidel and what they've been doing this year as far as a sporting organization or a sporting school, I should say, is concerned. They, of course, won champs, girls champs earlier this year. And now on the verge of possibly winning the Manning Cup. They've really flexed their muscle in the sporting arena. Yeah, and with a third of the population of Samona. 
for example, who maybe have, what, just about, well, over a 1,000. And most of the, 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 the high schools, are, a lot of the high schools competing in this competition, over a 1,000 students. Mona with just a shade over 500. Unbelievable that they have produced even what they have done in track with just a, a, a talent pool of, Heidel. Say five, so Heidel, sorry, of 500. And, yeah, to achieve this in football as well. You know, and it, it would be also important to see for, for, for most of these youngsters the first time they would be featuring on, on this kind of stage. So, yes, even though Heidel has been here before with none of these, neither Devon Anderson or these youngsters. So that, in terms of how you handle the moment mentally, emotionally, that's a big deal as well. So we can talk all about the talent and the production, but we can talk all about the, the talent and the production, but how these youngsters apply it on the field is the biggest thing. There's Devon Anderson, who, of course, with Holy Trinity, went to a final in the Champions Cup back in 2014. Would have lost to JC in the yeah, final at Sabina Park right. as well, but he has come back to a final, obviously, with that disappoint disappointment fueling him to get it right with a new team. And, and let's just say it as, it as it is, new resources, a lot more resources uh, as opposed to what he would have had yeah. at Holy Trinity. And definitely the youngsters as well, you know, what, what they have... What they, have, what they have achieved, as they say, over this, and, and just the fact of being on this stage. You think about it before, we spoke about the JC, KC, St. George's, or even St. Andrew Technical. They have, a lot of the youngsters would have been repeats, so they would have been, been at this stage before. But these, new ground. Well, we have all been creatures of habit. So used to talking about the likes of Jamaica College, Kingston College, St. George's College succeeding in the limelight of a showpiece Manning Cup finale in the last decade and a half. We beckon you to the doors of an historical night. There have been 14 winners of the Manning Cup. Remember the names, Jamaica College, St. George's College, Kingston College, Wilmer's Boys, Excelsior, Calabar, Charlie Smith, Camper Down, Norman Manley High, Bridgeport, Tivoli Gardens, Danoon Technical, St. Andrew Technical, and Arden High. They all will have new company tonight. One of two, Heidel or Mona, will be the 15th school to hold the symbol of corporate area schoolboy football supremacy on the island of Jamaica. And the party is long. And the sponsors will meet the teams. And I can just imagine what's going through the players' minds at the moment. The sponsors will meet Mona first, then they'll go across to Heidel. Nicholas Matthews, CEO of Sports Max. Trinique Phillips, Senior Account Executive, Main Event. And Matthew Christie, CEO, Soccer Express. Well, we've seen Jamaica College win the Walker Cup earlier today. Which one of these two teams will hold the Manning Cup aloft? Smiles on the faces at the moment. This is the easy part. The teams coming out were accompanied and still with them. Both the teams have risen to the top of their game to be here. And they will endure and find out exactly Ladies what it takes as we get ready to be champions. Football final of if it's all locked after 90 minutes, we head to penalties. And we know how much of a lottery that is. Also a big deal as well. Ask you all, ladies and gentlemen, please stand for we will now pause for the playing national of the National Anthem. anthem.
The Walk Up champions and their supporters still remain in the stands. Maybe looking on in envy for just a bit, but hoping to witness a schoolboy football spectacle as these two teams aim for their first Manning Cup crown. Okito Nicholson is the man in charge, or rather, O'Shea Nation, sorry, is the man in charge. Okito Nicholson is the fourth. O.J. Duhaney and Keone Denton will assist him. Christopher Mason is the fourth official, in fact. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Mona High. Akeem Bernard is it in between the sticks. They do have a back four of Dante Peralta, Stevon Johnson, Robinho Gordon. Fantastic player he is. Maquan Par Parchment in the middle of the park. Alex Swazo, Carlton Brown, Denzel McKenzie, of course, with 11 goals and 20 assists to his name. Demario Harris, Kishane Gordon, and Romarion Thomas up top. And uh, this is the starting lineup for Heidel High, of course, Tajari Lee between the six, uh, Joma Gordon, Michael Forbes, uh, Deshaun Henry, Kaelin Smith, Ronaldo Barrett, Gabriel Seaborn, Omario Henry, Kayani Jackson, Darren Campbell, and Dante Stewart. Captains will come across for the toss. They know that they need to be sharp tonight. Be in full control of the game. And of course, not be the story, the referees. The final moments before kickoff. Quiet before the storm. We're off. The 2023 Manning Cup final beat resolved. Mona against Heidel. Heidel in the yellow and blue tonight. They'll be kicking towards the Blue Mountain Range. Mona will be kicking towards the Caribbean Sea and downtown Kingston. It's Peralta with the throw. Trying to get Thomas into the thick of things. He was so influential in that semi-final win over St. George's College at Sabina Park. Had a quick start and maintained the intensity throughout.
Gordon looking for the long ball, but it was too long. No issues for Tazara Lee. Craig Butler, the technical director of this Mona High team. Good work already by Keani Jackson. The Mona players covering that one well. Mona again with the possession. They look to create a better transition on this occasion. No issues at the back. Here's Heidel. Delightful ball out wide. The challenge, a good one from Robinho Gordon. Kevin Anderson, the man in charge at Heidel, looking on the action now, and here's a shot that didn't have a lot of power behind it. Thomas, he's skillful, he's strong. He couldn't get by a, a second defender on that occasion. He's definitely one of the players of the season. Not for Mona, I mean overall. Bright future ahead of him if he stays focused and disciplined, Ramarian Thomas. Very versatile player, willing to get back and defend, can go forward well, can score, can use either foot. Good pass of the ball. Sees the big picture. It's a lot of attributes that should lend to a bright career. Didn't quite work in switching the play just now. What Mona will have to be careful of with this with this Heidel unit is they don't mind sometimes sitting back and then hit you on the counter, as I said, with that individual ability that they have. And Mona, you've seen over the season where they have been susceptible, especially in the wide areas. Managed it very well against St. George's. But yeah, that has been a weak point over their last couple of seasons. Mackenzie hoping to make an impact on the ball. Craig Butler believes that he's the best midfielder in the entire schoolboy football competition. He usually has very high praises for his players. Mona again. There was a deflection on that pass. Didn't reach the intended target. Surprisingly, in the games that Mackenzie has been on TV, he's actually scored quite a bit in most of them that we've done, but we haven't really seen the electric passing which he has displayed all over the season. With his 20 assists, we haven't seen as, as much as that, those spitting passes, but maybe he's saving the best for last.
Hi, they'll take in their time about it. Stewart now playing in the middle of the park for Hydel. At times he's played in the back four. Again, Gordon in the right place at the right time. hand here from Robino another player who's had an outstanding season right for O'Shea Nation to have a word with him there yeah I don't think it was entirely accidental still feeling the side of his face as well hmm Mona having some difficulty clearing their lines. Heidel, they've won it back in a dangerous position. Needed a better ball inside. It was under pressure. Yeah. But uh, you knew you could have done a little bit better with that one, Deshaun Henry. I think he was hoping to earn a corner. Mm. Having four players coming across to him. One of the things with this Heidel unit, we did criticize St. Andrew Technical in the Walker Cup final, but they are not afraid to take on players. And hence why they get extra attention when they're on the ball. Devon Anderson did. Remember his days at Holy Trinity. His side was always exciting. Nice attacking team for Holy Trinity from 2014 for the next couple of years. And did well, got to a few semi-finals and the final of the Champions Cup. Here's Kishen Gordon, another exciting player. Sends the ball inside. The header is wide of the mark, though. Demaria Harris with four goals to his name so far. Couldn't find the target. Heidel, mm. of course, have been here before. The final, I mean. Back in 2012. They couldn't stop St. George's College from winning their fourth title in five years back then. And you don't have to worry about them this time. Mona assured that. That they did. The header out wide. Opportunity. Big chance. Goal. Heidel is behind. And it's the Mario Harris that sends Mona in front. It was a big chance that they took with both hands. And with his fifth goal this season, Harris pushes Mona ahead 1-0 in the 10th minute. Good build-up play. Love the pace of this attack as well. Move the ball well. That was a lovely pass into Harrison. It wasn't an easy finish by any means. Brave header initially. And here, Kishane Gordon with an excellent pass to Harris. And he had the goalkeeper wrong-footed as well. Just look at that. Allow the ball to come across his body and just use a natural angle to steer it into the far corner. Intelligent finish. Yeah, a handful of goals this season. And he'll remember that one for a long time to come. Well, it was really a pedestrian start by both teams. And then the break. And Mona, they were able to capitalize. The question is, how will Heidel respond to this? And that description doesn't surprise me, Donald. As we said, they do have that ability going forward with a pace, creativity, skill. That, as you said, the tempo can be slow, and they both teams have that ability to just pick things up and have players that can show individual brilliance. Well, 
that situation had many awkward things about it. Seemed like there was a handball as well as a slip. As well as fall into the ground in an awkward position. Gabriel Seaborn is getting some attention now. Usually is in the middle of the park for Heidel. But uh, part of the back four for tonight's final. He's up for it tonight, Craig Butler. And why wouldn't he be? Believe it or not, it was actually Gordon's first assist of the season, Kishane Gordon. Their number seven. Has sometimes come off the bench. Tonight he's a starter. And yeah. It. Trying to get the attention of one of his players, Devon Anderson. Omaria Henry, the former Calabar player, needs to see more of the ball for Heidel. Forbes with the kick. Peralta with a throw. Thomas on it. Getting some assistance from out wide. Here's the delivery inside. Not a bad one headed away. Not too far out. Here's the shot that has taken a deflection. Shot coming in from Alex Suazo. Still looking for his first goal. Amidst the fact that Mona have so many. Who defended initially to get that header away it wasn't an easy header and then yeah closing down so as a shot but Mona looked dangerous as they always do it's going to be Denzel McKenzie with the delivery here having words with a couple of the players they say prevention is better than cure here's Mackenzie's ball inside headed away by Forbes he's been a rock at the back this season for Heidel Gordon with his trickery gets the space needed We'll have another attempt. That's a delightful ball inside. And it's just wide of the mark. And uh, Carlton Brown looking for his fourth this season. Probably couldn't believe the ball that headed his way. Had a bit of space as well. Intelligent to go for the far corner, I think. Just looking to steer it there. That wasn't an easy hit at all from Brown. He did well, you know. Just to even get that down. I don't think it had enough pace behind it. to beat the alert Lee.
Henry sends it out wide. Hyder looking to be a little bit more alert. Jackson poking it out wide, but couldn't find a teammate. Mackenzie was eclipsed. Referee tells him to get up and play on. And Heidel, they play on, looking for the equalizer. Ball headed out. Gordon back in the defensive third, earning his team a throw. There's Jackson, who also applies his trade with Cavalier Soccer Club. From the south side, the 17 year old, not too far from the National Stadium. <laughs> Free kick awarded the shove on Demario Harris. Joe McGordon caught. There's an effort that is a bit wayward. Filled with ambition, of course. Heidel with a half-hearted press on that occasion, and now they have to do some defending again. Gordon being a nuisance and <laughs> falling over after his own trickery. That was dangerous. But uh, Lee was clipped. Contrasting situation for Heidel to their semi-final where they actually led 2-0 at the half and then Gave up their lead only to come back and win on penalties this time They will have to do Well, here's Mona looking for a second This time they will have to come from behind and I think they're very capable Well, JC did come from behind against that and he managed to win Albeit on penalties. And very controversial means as well. Well, here is Mona again going forward. The shot taken deflected effort. That could have gone anywhere, but didn't. Well, nowhere dangerous at any rate. It's a corner kick again to Mona High. Yeah, nice defending. Forbes and Gordon in the thick of things. Another talking to from Shea Nation. This time it's Romari and Thomas. There's a ball inside, and that will go out for a throw in. A 
he created the goal. Did Kishane Gordon. But that delivery was much better than this one. Almost went through, but the flag had gone up. Yeah, I was about to say he certainly would have been offside. The Muna team so far have done well at closing the wide players of Heidel, not allowing them to run at them, which is where the Heidel players are really good. Double teamed where necessary. They have been very organized so far, and as I've said, that's a part of their game that has improved dramatically, especially as the season has gone on, and especially since last year, where I thought defensively a lot of times they weren't organized as well as they could have been. And scored many, but also conceded needless goals. Oh. Going through before he got cut down here. And the yellow card is shown. Carlton Brown goes into the referee's book. Now he has to be careful. Here's a shot from distance that's well wide of the mark from Michael Forbes. Heidel again. Keeper should hold on. Hakeem Bernard. coming together but in the end it will go with Mona High the free kick Heidel again will try. And uh, was he being held back there? <laughs> Corner kick awarded. Can Heidel respond here with this set piece? Not the most convincing clearance. And Henry doing a little bit too much and is upset by the call.
not the most convincing clearance picked up by Mackenzie. Barrett. Mona, they are hustling for everything. Wayne Marshall is here, looking on at the action inside the office. Hmm. Heidel has it. Oh, lovely. Decided against the shot. But here's a chance that's deflected, and Bernard manages to hold on. I suspect Deshaun Henry wanted a little bit more power behind that shot. I thought Dante Stewart would have taken the initial effort. Yeah, I'm surprised that he didn't go for the shot. I thought he, had, he was in the best position, was Stewart. Hasn't scored so far this season. Stewart he had laid it off and then the shot was somewhat blocked well, maybe Henry was in a better position in the end more central hmm. preferred foot Stewart cutting in but hasn't scored so far this season maybe that's why doesn't really have the confidence yeah didn't quite bet on himself there hmm. there's an appeal for a handled ball and is right alongside his body. Did touch his hand. Just look at it here from McKenzie. It's Campbell who is there. You should see he was bringing his hand right alongside his body. Way too close as well. Mona trying again. Ball sent inside. The header away. Swazo picks it up. Does well in that battle. Here's Jackson. And Heidel moving forward. And that's a good challenge again. Did Gordon hurt himself in the process? Stretching for that one. Well, he's going to get some attention now. And he looks to be in some pain. He doesn't look too comfortable at all, Gordon. Not a bad crowd inside the National Stadium. Heidel really looking for that response ball inside and another attempt at the back post couldn't do a whole lot with it in the end Deshaun Henry has been involved in a, a lot of things so far for Heidel well Gordon didn't require help from off the bench, but he has to be off for a bit.
Tajari Lee would now require some attention. And uh, teams will now take this time out to have some words on the sidelines. This game hasn't quite come out of first gear, I don't think, but there's a tension here, especially in the aftermath of the go-ahead goal by Demarion Harris. Mm. I think it's probably more in second gear. Definitely a higher tempo and a lot more exciting than the first match we saw today. That was certainly in first gear. I think the passing quality here has been a lot better. Moving the ball as well, pretty well. Well, Heidel trying to mix something again, but Omari and Henry couldn't quite gather. Again, a case of deja vu. Thomas Peralta involved, swung this all the way across, kept alive before he. He lost it eventually. Ball swung over the top of the keeper though. Lee was alert to the danger. Moyle defenders have handled most everything in the air so far. Nicely done. Really good football by Mona. Oh, Forbes. That was wonderful timing too. Forbes looking for that searching ball once more. It was a little difficult to handle. Campbell won it. Here's Mona again. Can this be kept in play by Gordon? went down a little bit too easily there.
Heidel once more looking to respond and was there a trip? Nation lets it go. And now it goes the other way. And it comes through to Thomas. Thomas. Thomas! Lee holds on at the second attempt. Oh, Forbes has given it up in a dangerous area. Mona, can they capitalize? No. Stewart sends it out wide. Mackenzie. Or Jackson, rather, that was trying to get that one inside. Same number, different color. Mm. Keanu Jackson. Plays for Cavalier in the Premier League, Jamaica Premier League. Couldn't be kept in play. Goal kick. You yeah, mentioned that Jackson is on the south side, which isn't too far from here. As we take a look at the Froome technical team. They'll be in action tomorrow. Yeah, for the Ben Francis Cup final with uh, the Grahai. Rural area knockout, in case you're wondering. Have won the title before in 2006, did Froome. Good coverage there by Forbes. Who is... Who is from not too far from the National Stadium, from Jake's Road. Of Mountain View Avenue, which is where, of course, Independence Park Complex is based. Nation thought about it. The referee then awarded the free kick. Knew what he was doing, Robina Gordon. Just stopping Henry in his tracks. Scored in the semi final, did Omaria Henry. Dangerous player. Well, this could be interesting for Heidel. With less than four minutes to go. Plus time added for stoppages, of course. Jackson is behind this one. Can he create some magic here? Desperate for the equalizer before the halftime interval. They have an opportunity here. Straight into the wall. Seems as if another free kick has been awarded. Sean Henry is the one behind this one now. 
looking to be the provider. Just five Heidel players inside the box looking to get on the end of this from Henry. The ball inside. Now that's a clearance. Bernard he himself needs some attention. That was a bit of a delayed reaction. Feeling the blow as he tried to collect that one. Just a reminder for you to download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or the App Store. Keep in touch with all the happenings of the the remainder of the schoolboy football season. We have tomorrow, we have Wednesday to go. Bart. Seaborn trying to beat his marker. Barrett then lost it. Forbes read that well, striding forward, sends it out wide, and Seaborn couldn't get a proper crossing. <laughs> Five minutes of stoppages to be played. For Mario Thomas. Now it's with Peralto. Peralto! Not sure if he was looking for the shot, you know. Good advantage played by referee nation. Yeah, the first touch wasn't the best from Peralto. So it looked as if he was going for the cross initially, but nearly ended up being awkward for Lee. Oh, poor giveaway again. Opportunity that hasn't been taken by Kishane Gordon. Space opening up nicely for him, Kishane Gordon, on his preferred left foot. Just look here, yeah, a bit of a body shake, which created an opening for him. But yeah, didn't balance himself before the strike and it was nowhere close. Well, twice he tried to make that pass for Alta and was unsuccessful. Now an opportunity, Henry. Needs to have done better with his attempt at service there. Well, there's better.
couldn't bring it under the control he needed, Gordon, but what a cross-field pass that was from Thomas. I really like him as a player. Heidel, they just haven't turned up, I don't think. Here's an effort that's deflected, and Lee was right behind it. Jackson with it. Strong from Suazo. Yeah, he's helped the back line a lot this season, Suazo, in that defensive midfield role. Almost went through. Nice. And Gordon is set free. And Forbes does well. Talk about a tower at the back. Yeah, his touch let him down though, Gordon. Advantage played again by Nation. Gordon is still down. Now it's with Romarion Thomas. Thomas cutting inside. He can let fly, you know. Decides against it. And now the play will stop to give Gordon some attention. Wow, card for Forbes. A bit surprising because what I thought was that Gordon had a heavy touch. And let's see it here. Oh, it's afterwards? No, can't be that. Can't be that. Gordon lifting up. Un un unless the left foot what, that we are not seeing did something else. But Gordon lifted up, which forced Forbes to have to go over him. And there was a slight tap on the back with the right foot. Nothing malicious. He didn't step on him. He didn't use the studs. Maybe unfortunate. Let's hope that doesn't play an important role. And Forbes is saying the same thing. He can't understand it. I, I think that was missed by referee nation. And obviously Forbes didn't say anything. So it's not in discipline. Anyhow. The first game, I can tell you, was full of controversy. And... Certainly the likes of Tyrone Robinson and Kelsa Anderson will have to look back at the footage and think to themselves that they got that horribly wrong. And unfortunately, St. Andrew Technical ended up with the wrong end of the stick. That's the end of the first half. Mona High, they have the advantage. Damarian Harris with his fifth goal of the campaign. Crucial in this one. Good finish to inside the box. And that's the difference between both sides so far in this Manning Cup final here at the National Stadium. Hytel, I don't think they have really turned up to the party as yet. Their defense has been relatively good, but they have given up possession so many times and haven't been able to play their own game. They have to, in order to stand a chance of coming back in this one. 1-0 one to Mona High over Heidel High at the interval.
Cup of the Finals tomorrow. From the rural area, the Issa Ben Francis Cup on Sports Max Plus and on Scene TV, McGrath High against Froom Technical. 2.30 p.m. Jamaica time, 3.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. That's our pregame show. And then right after that, Clarendon College, Glenmuir High, the battle for the Dacosta Cup. 6 p.m. Jamaica time, 7 in the Eastern Caribbean. Kickoff. This is the Manning Cup final, Mona High, 1-0 over Heidel High. And uh, Mona with the advantage courtesy of Deb Marion Harris, who got his fifth goal of the season. And it was a, a lead they deserved because they, they have put in much more effort, or they did put in much more effort in that first half at Mona. Yeah, definitely. I thought they had a lot more impetus going forward. Their 18-yard action was much better than Heidel. Still kind of waiting for Heidel to find their own. But credit to Mona because I think they have closed down the wide players, especially of Heidel. They haven't given them any space to do damage. But yeah, Mona thrusting more players forward. I think their midfield players definitely been better, Mona. And it has contributed, contributed to them being a much, much more dangerous in and around that 18-yard box. O'Shea Nation here, uh, uh, well, time will tell whether that booking, how important that is, but I thought he got that one wrong with the booking to Forbes. And just based on how the game has gone so far, Forbes has been very involved in terms of stopping Mona's yes, advancement and some big tackles. And yeah, with a mistake like that, you just hope that there's not something else that will change the, the balance of the game. And Heidel, they have to come from behind. They have to be more accurate with their passing and in their transition. Yes. yes, Mona has done really well. Yeah, different perspective for Heidel, who mm -hmm. in the semi-final, as we said, they led 2-0 against Kingston College, lost the two-goal advantage, and then had to win on penalties. Now, as you said, they are at a deficit. So let's see their resilience and how well they can fight. Most of their games this season, they have led. Well, Henry trying to get past the second there. In the end, this team will get another opportunity to try and make a difference here. Heidel looking to make an impact early in the second half and get back into this contest. Here's the ball inside. Forbes trying to get there. And now it'll go the other way. And Mona looking to break here. And it's Thomas. And that's a good challenge. Really good challenge coming in from Seaborn again. himself has been busy so far today I think a deliberate ploy to try and match the likes of Thomas and Gordon with a lot of speed ball inside should be easily handled Really good work. Heidel. Ambitious effort from way outside. Hmm. Robinho just telling his teammates not to 
put each other under pressure. Unnecessary so too. So as it goes long, Seaborn doing enough. Thomas with a slip throw into Heidel. Johnson needs some help in the aftermath of that connection. What is he thinking, Devin Anderson? The scenario that's before him at the moment with his team trying to get back into this contest. Mona may be more than willing to try and defend this lead. They've done it so many times before this season. But can they withstand the Heidel pressure? Heidel know they have to play better. Mackenzie, or rather Jackson again, trying to thread that one through, and it goes the other way. Was there too much on it? No. Kept in play by Thomas. Here's an attempt that's deflected. That was from McKenzie. Yep. Corner kick now. Seaborn was there to block again. Kenzie has gone across to take this corner kick for Mona. Quite a few corners this season have led to goals for Mona from his boot. Mackenzie's ball inside, cleared at the near post. Sent long. Smith turns it back to Henry. Barrett does well. Lines up an effort that it could have been a, a really good pass inside. The, the block was made. They take it short in the corner. Smith inside. He didn't know where the ball was. The clearance is eventually made. Heidel coming closer and closer here. Yeah, intelligent from Suazo as well. Just realized if he tried to just kick that, it might ricochet off of a Heidel attacker. So just flicked up the ball to get the aerial. Aerial kick out of it, and it worked. Well, that was really well done. Sublime. They have to withstand this Mona pressure, though. Another good challenge coming in. This time from Campbell. Hopeful ball over the top. 
Mona, well, he was on his heels on that occasion. Wasn't quite sharp to get there. Peralto. That's a challenge from behind. And Nation shows the card in the direction of Seaborn. Busy in the second half, Seaborn. They've been attacking his flank quite regularly. Lovely turn it was from Thomas yet again. And just put his left foot across to ensure that he protected the ball. That was a yellow card offence. Yes. The second of the evening. Two across the back line with yellow cards now for Heidel High. And now another opportunity for Mona. This is some way out. Peralto, Mackenzie, and Thomas. A yellow card is coming out to Peralto. Well, Nation is saying wasting time. Wow. <laughs> well, I think there was a, a change of strategy from the kickers. Anyhow. Peralto in the book, I guess. Thomas's effort, wide of the mark. Yeah, difficult angle and really some way out. Thomas is a good technician, has the ability, but was a bit too ambitious. Just to confirm the yellow card to Peralta for time wasting. Too slight from Henry, and then it ended up being too rough in trying to win it back. Omaria Henry. two cars on either side now Donald because we do remember that Carlton Brown got a card early as well so both himself and Peralta in the book oh that's dangerous Swaza has it Swaza with the dink that's wide of the mark I guess if it was one player in the midfield slash forward line you'd want the ball to fall to if you are a defense line it would be Swazo not known for his goal scoring at all what he is known for pretty decent at it yeah is and as I said he's brought a lot more stability to this Mona team defensively Gordon goes long. Seaborn couldn't quite clear properly. You'll have another opportunity. Again, couldn't quite handle it. And then that's booted into touch. By Dante Stewart. Barrett. That's what he's good for, Swazo. Picks up again, looks up with a shot that didn't have proper connection on it. Brown looking for his fourth goal this season, Carlton Brown. Challenge coming in, and it's a good one from Forbes. It goes behind for a goal kick. He really has to get those correct. Michael Forbes. A 
Beaches has also opened up tonight. Quite a few in it as well. Heidel. Ball sent out wide. Smith. Smith luckily gets it back. Oh. Couldn't get the cross inside. There was some appeal for a possible handball. Ball coming inside the area. Opportunity here for Heidel and uh, Henry. Or Mario Henry, who hasn't really been too involved as he was in the semi final. Again, couldn't quite control it in his favor. Too many touches, possibly. Yeah, he realized that he made the wrong decision, Henry. When he picked it up there, he should have been taking that right footed shot. Tried to just push it past the defender, and that would have closed his angle a lot. No chance in the end. I think that's a big opportunity missed for Heidel as well to really test the keeping ability of Akeem Bernard. Really got nothing going in the 18-yard area of Heidel. Seaborn was quite close there. And got a hand to the head for his troubles. Peralto with the delivery. Almost flicked across to Gordon. Here's an attempt. Blocked by his teammate. Lifted out wide. Gordon pulls it across. Brilliant defending. That was magnificent defending at the near post. Yep, he did beat the offside trap well. Corner kick. Not clear properly. And somehow they managed to move away outside the box. Oh, delightful stuff. Was there a handled ball there? Yellow card will be shown. Macron Parchment goes into the referee's book. Third player book for Mona. Two already in the book for Heidel. Mm. Probably well deserved as well. Smith gets the return. Smith across the area. Again, good defending by Peralto. Heidel still looking for the equalizer. Goal kick in the end. Yeah, lovely defensive work as well by Romarian Thomas getting back, showing his strength. Just to force that out of play. He is a real number eight, isn't he? Romarian Thomas. Box to box. Midfielder. Still a tight contest here. Yeah. 
lovely from Jackson. And then the searching ball over the top, the flag stays down, but Bernard is well stationed. Download the Sportsman's app today. You can download it either from the Google Play Store or the App Store. ball over the top Mona in possession Thomas a little bit disappointed that he couldn't get that under his spell there Peralta in the way. Hayden needs something different to get back into this game. Haven't really seen the X factor in them this evening. Can they make something here? That's lovely. Again, it was Jackson. Department was waiting for the contact. <laughs> Lovely stuff by Heidel in transition on the left hand side, Keelan Smith. Smith, delightful ball inside, still a chance, it's blocked. They're trying to come alive. Mona with the defending. The flag stays down. Eventually goes up. Yeah, it was a bit delayed, but I think it was a clear offside. Good decision. Finally, as I said, Heidel coming to life. More players thrusted forward and putting some pressure on the back line of Mona. They have the talent, Heidel. It's a cohesion at times that I think some is missing. Let's see if they can get it together. Again, the ball over the top, handled well by the Mona defence. Jackson picks it up. Barrett. Henry does well. Henry looking for support. Here's a shot that's taken, a snapshot from Keelan Smith. It was easy for Bernard. Good power behind the shot from Smith, though. He made great connection with the left foot. Nice run by Henry. He needs to get much more involved. Good power behind that, but yeah, Bernard was there at his near post, as he should be. Six goals on the season for Smith. 
Mona looking to respond, and what an interception that was. Joe McGordon, I think back there, for Heidel, he has come up trumps on a, a number of occasions tonight for the Ferry Base team. Yeah, great work. Himself and P Forbes are putting a real shift. Not sure how much he's counting for at the moment because they're on the losing end of things. But look at here, that touch initially was excellent. Was it actually Gordon in the end? Or was jo it Joe Gordon. It was Joe Gordon. Okay. Yeah. Akeem Bernard now needs some additional attention. In this day and age, when you consider players getting cards for time wasting and goalkeepers going down. I don't think the referees need to fuss about it too much. You don't, I don't think you even need to show yellow cards. You just put back the time on. When it's within your control, just I add mean, back the time, I think. I believe obvious time wasting should be penalized because obviously it's against the spirit of the game, etc. But in a situation I thought with Peralto, I don't think that was I don't think they were trying to waste time at all. I just think it was a, a change of tactic. And you said as, it, as you said, that situation could have been handled differently. Yeah. I think sometimes when the week, a, a goalkeeper purposely, for example, changes the side of the box he wants to kick from when they have a lead and obvious time wasting tactics, then yes. Or for example, when as you said, players, I mean English Premier League have put this in now where if you touch the ball, if, if it's not your kick and you kick it away, it's an instant yellow. A lot of that is unacceptable. Well, the situation with Peralta, I thought, yeah, that was a bit harsh. I guess even that situation, you would have asked which one of the three players you'd have thought <laughs> which one was wasting time in that setup. But anyway, we move on. Heidel in the attacking third, and again, can do little to go forward. I mentioned before at the start of the second half that Mona, they are renowned for just keeping a lead. Here is Heidel though and Henry looking for something quite out of the ordinary. Yeah, I was making the point that Mona, they are renowned for going ahead and defending the leads, especially the narrow ones. Mm. which surprised me because I used to think that Mona generally gave up a lot of opportunities but as I said they have improved a lot this season I think with Suazo in that defensive midfield role it, it has helped as well they have defended better from their flank areas which is where they have been susceptible here they come again Heidel again a long range effort that Bernard had to stretch to get I'm not quite sure if it was actually on target but Bernard I suppose had to make sure but with a team of this quality as that Heide, as Heidel, I don't think necessarily Mona are good enough to park the bus defensively. What? Especially with the individual poise that Heidel have, and you've seen it. The fact that they have tried to sit back now, they have welcomed Heidel, and yeah. these kind of opportunities which didn't happen in the first half have now evolved. But do you think we have seen the best of Heidel tonight? No, but I also think that 
credit to how Mona played in the first half. They didn't really give Heidel the space. I think they controlled the middle of the pitch. Jackson touches it out wide. Stewart playing that to the edge of the box. Tried to get Jackson involved. Thomas moves away from Jackson. Tried to get by Forbes. Forbes has to be careful. That's a foul. Nation has a look at him and gives him the final warning. He says he's watching him. Yeah. Well, the Heidel bench will be watching O'Shea Nation as well. <laughs> that was more of a yellow card than what he got in the first stanza. Yeah. Here's the ball inside. And uh, saw it all the way. Did Lee. I know they talk so much about Mackenzie, Donald, but for me, every time I watch Mona play, Thomas is a man for me. Yeah. Barrett. Parchment up top. Does well, Barrett gets it back, sends it out wide, flag stays down, drilled across the area. Still a chance for Heidel. Here's a shot that's sick. Oh no, it's deflected and wide. It was Barrett inside the box that was letting fly there. Looking for double digits on the season. Here's Ronaldo Barrett, 90 has to go with his seven assists. And he wasn't far away. Much better play from Heidel, finding the spaces, wide areas again. Against this Mona team, that was a difficult angle, you know, but it was probably heading on target if it wasn't for the deflection. Corner kick to Heidel. Here it comes inside. Thinking of the shot. <laughs> Could be deflected again, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's another corner. Or is it? No. It's a goal kick, in fact. Campbell onto the corner. Mm. I'm not sure if Craig Butler thinks he, his team is Italy, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this park the bus mentality after just 60 minutes. Yeah, way too early, I think, for for Craig Butler to be trying to park the bus. And I just don't think the defensive unit is solid enough to to stop an attack like this. And it's showing. They're bringing Heidel into the game more and more, and they're gaining confidence. And that's always very dangerous. 1-0 is, is a lead alone. I mean, at this stage, could be just two quick strikes, and it's all over. Smith. The header away. Gordon. One of the challenge from Campbell. Couple of look Mona players down as they try and manage the time and possibly take the sting out of the passion shown by Heidel in the last few minutes. By the way, we haven't seen one substitution made by either team. I think we're about to see one at least. Yeah, that is surprising. Parchment with the throw. Gordon.
Cartman is thinking about a long throw here. And it is not cleared properly. But this is what Mona needs to do, control the ball and the tempo nice from Suazo. Yep. Suazo has had a brilliant game. I think he has. Ball retention, a strong part of his game, Suazo. Reading the play, breaking up play. So Mona making a change. Adriana Vassal comes on for the goal scorer, yeah. the Marion Harris. Player who started his school days at Jamaica College, did Harris the goal scorer. There he is on the side. Made a move from Jamaica College to Mona. Close in proximity, I mean, just two minutes drive away. Idol also making a change with Dante Stewart coming out. Replaced by Dante Brooks. Yet to score this season, Brooks coming on. Has two assists to his name, though. Heidel number 16. Here's Heidel again. Campbell. It was a hopeful ball inside. Not pressing as high. Mona with about 10 minutes to go, plus time added for stoppages. Yeah, sitting back. But Heidel, they have to do better in the attacking third. Ooh, wow. Oh, that's lovely. And here's an effort that's deflected. And again, the Sean Henry looking to get involved more and more. There we see that individual skill from the Heidel players. They haven't made it count just yet, but nice to see. National goalkeeper Andre Blake in the stands as this ball comes inside and it's going to be a goal kick. It is going to be a goal kick. Heidel still yet to score in a Manning Cup final. And they have almost played 180 minutes of them. So much support in the house for these two teams and just generally to support the schoolboy football in arena. Great to see. I guess everybody probably wanting to witness a, a piece of history, Donald. Yeah. The 15th Manning Cup winner mm. will be one of these schools. And as it stands, Mona will be one from one. Got to the final on their first occasion and won it. Analyzing the 83 minutes so far, you would say they have been deserving. They have looked a lot more purposeful, but just with this, as you said, part the bus mentality, they have allowed Heidel into the second half, little by little. Ball over the top once more, and Bernard allowing his centre-back to get there ahead of him, that's Robinho Gordon. To Shane Gordon now. Trying to get the sweeping ball out wide. The whistle blows. 
to Bart was fouled on a couple of occasions. The O'Shea Nation tried to play the advantage. That's what I mean, Chris Taylor. Those little passages, Heidel in the attacking third, they just haven't been as sharp tonight. I don't think this has been one of their better games, and what's the time to play this way? We spoke about managing the platform, though, as well, Don, and managing the occasion, the emotions and so on. It's the first time these players would have been in a final. Lots of nerves involved, adrenaline rushes and so on. Not only that, that can also work against you, you know. Not only that, a number of these players are playing in the Manning Cup for the first time. Yeah, not to mention the it. final. Oh, well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, the nerves in the final far supersede mm -hmm. just playing the first game of the season. Well, here comes Mona looking to seal this off as a contest. And Heidel with an opportunity to break here and can't. Oh, that's a lovely bit of collection here. Here's a shot that's taken off the bar. Still a chance, and it's punched away by Lee. That bit of skill was that man, Romario and Thomas again. Let me tell you, it was a piece of magic from the number eight. Hand. Look at that skill. It's not the first time I'm seeing him do that, you know. Wow. Lee was beaten. Oh, that's some top skill there. That would have been one of the goals of the season. And the strike was magnificent. It was. So was Gordon's, by the way, which was well saved by Lee. But Lee was beaten from this one. Mm -hmm. An inch lower. And it would have been number two. And good night, sweet prince, for Heidel. Well, it's now time for the Sportsmax app moment of the game. Of course, courtesy of the Sportsmax app. And just the one goal in this. And of course, it's the moment of the game. Lovely ball inside and making a proper connection on that one. It was Mona's number 11. In the right place at the right time, Damarion Harris getting his fifth of the season. The difference in this final so far. It's going to be interesting to see how much minutes will be added for stoppages. Forbes goes down and there was a handled ball there. And a yellow card is shown to Suazo. for kicking away the ball. Yeah, he was totally frustrated with the call on the play. Wait. Handball on who? No, I, I think you got the yellow card for... Yeah, but the whistle went against him. Why was there a whistle against Suazo? Uh, no, I think it was a foul before ah. on Forbes. Okay. Yeah. Forbes was tripped up there. He needed help there, Keelan Smith. And again. Barrett with a searching ball. Hey, they're not building their plays properly. Just look hoping for some individual brilliance. So it's a hopeful ball. And the thought is that a yellow shirt will collect it. And not a yellow card, is it? Is that Barrett that goes into the book now? towing away the ball but if you think of it from nation's perspective if i don't want to waste time at this point losing by a goal to nil then hey it's silly on their part and that's what i'm talking about although that was more in frustration as, as opposed to time wasting
you get the yellow card for that. Yeah. For showing dissent. Who would have thought, though, that we would have had this kind of crowd for Mona versus Heidel? You're talking about a school, as we said, with just 500 in terms of its population. Not known for football. Mona itself, in the, even though Craig Butler would have stirred up quite a, a frenzy. Yeah, there there in the are a lot of neutrals here. But, yeah, it's, it's just shows how schoolboy football has grown and more and more and how the support generally is for the product oh they've given it up in a dangerous area mona trying to capitalize and uh, it's going to be a free kick another car yep he's soon going to run out of space on those cars as she nation we have darren campbell shown the yellow Tough challenge on the shins. And these challenges not working in Heidel's favor as the clock ticks away. Just five minutes of stoppages to be played. Well, well, well. Could they seal it? Thomas has been wonderful today. Mackenzie get to show his brilliance. Both behind it. Four-man wall constructed by Heidel. It's Mackenzie. No issues there for Tajari Lee. Heidel, they do not have a lot of time. They have to make something. <laughs> Nicely done by Gordon. Trying to move away from Barrett, who did enough, according to Referee Nation. And the ball given away. A change is going to be made by Heidel. Andrew Allen comes on for Seaborn. Here's a, a Mono is trying to get down to Thomas. Heidel can't make their way into, well, deep into the half. Just got a shot of PR extraordinaire. Carol Beckford in the stands. As far as the player of the match is concerned, at this point in time, it has to be Romarian Harris, right? Here's Romarian an opportunity. Romarian Thomas, sorry. Yeah, I think so. Let's play on the park. 
Thomas and Swazo have been the two best players on the park oh, for me. Yes, for Swazo especially, right? For Mona. Yeah. Thomas has done it at both ends of the pitch. Also, Robinho Gordon and Stephon Johnson, who've headed quite a bit of balls outside the area. Heidel with the free kick inside the area. And it goes behind for a corner kick, which has been awarded. Last chance saloon, pretty much, for Heidel High. Surprisingly, just five players inside the box. It's now or never for them. Now a sixth inside the area. He needs a perfect delivery, Henry. Here he comes. Ooh. Henry was trying to get on the end of that one. Good clearance. Here's the ball inside again. And that's nodded behind for another corner. Back-to-back -back corners. Good concentration here from the Mona team. They will need all that concentration for the final minute or so. Final few seconds, really. Well, sorry. Heidel, they have to move quickly. Taken short. Here's a chance that's taken that Bernard has to hold on to. There it is. Well, they are celebrating Mona on the field of play. And he could and somebody is taking off a shirt here. Yeah. That could be a card. Hmm. I don't think O'Shea not Nation saw that, but he I was wondering why he awarded a free kick. I must have missed something there. And his, his teammates are telling him to put back on the shirt quickly. He didn't, and now he runs the risk of going in the book. Who is it? Well, exactly. It's Vassal, Adriano Vassal. And instead of putting on the shirt quickly, well, he earned himself a, a card. Well, that is the final whistle. Mona's revolution is the Manny Cup's resolution. Craig Butler has his title. Before the start of this game, it was all about him saying unification of purpose. And now they have found their purpose. And pride swells inside the National Stadium. Mona Pride is the story of the Manic of 2023. Chaotic scenes. And finally, finally, victory. Finally, dreams becoming reality. Finally, Mona, Manny Cup champions. The full match highlights of Shane Nation, the man with the whistle. And after 10 minutes, this the definitive moment for Mona. Headed on by Mackenzie. It came to Gordon, who just glanced up and saw his teammate, Demarion Harris, in an excellent position. And wasn't he clinical with his finish into the far triangle?
1-0. 10 minutes into their first Manning Cup final. And how did they know at that time that that would have been all they would have needed? They continued to drive forward. Again, it was Gordon driving the ball inside the area. Carlton Brown got his head onto it, but couldn't steer it between the sticks. Then this moment, getting into the area was high. That thought he should have taken the strike there. In the end, left it for Deshaun Henry, whose shot was weak. Thomas, who was the best player on the park for Mona, cutting in and finding a shot, really doing it at both ends. He's playing in a more advanced role this season, Romari and Thomas. But yeah, certainly a real box-to-box. -box. Kishane Gordon, what a... A pretty good first half, cutting on to the left foot. But just couldn't find the accuracy. Then into the second half, Heidel trying to get some balls into the area. This one well defended. Carlton Brown away on that occasion. Came into their own a little, did Heidel, as the second half wore on. Gordon, and that was excellent defending on that occasion by Barrett. It was getting back, or was it? It actually was probably Gordon putting his body on the line. Had an excellent game, did Gordon, but it wasn't enough. Heidel coming forward here. Henry to Smith to... Yeah. And that strike off target from Ronaldo Barrett. Deflected as well. And as I said, there was a 10-minute period where Mona trying to park the bus. Wasn't the best option. This, they look a lot better at. Driving forward again, it was that man, Romarian Thomas, with a sublime bit of control and strike. Look at this picture perfect and an inch too high Lee was beaten and luckily for him his woodwork was there to back him up and then got strong palms on that one from Kishane Gordon to keep the score at one kept his team hopes alive but unfortunately it wasn't enough couldn't find a goal yet to score in a Manning Cup final are Heidel and Mona their first time they have done the job Just one goal in it, five on target from 20 attempts for Mona. Heidel, they had 10 shots, they had four on target, but they couldn't find that goal. It was a busy day for Shane Nelson. Nason, he showed eight yellow cards, and there were 23 fouls as well. All 22 players remained on the park, that was good to see. Three offsides, Heidel, the guilty of the two. They also had majority of the corners, and less of the possession. Mona high, 52%. As well as the lone goal, they lift their first Manning Cup title. Let's hear from our man of the match. He is with Kimani. It's Romarian Thomas. Thank you, Chris. I'm joined by man of the match for this Manning Cup final, Romarian Thomas. Romarian, you're a champion right now. How does it feel? It's a great feeling. I can't explain right now. I'm very happy. Yeah, you were walking by and all the fans, they were crowding you and saying they knew you would win. Was that the feeling you had coming into this game today? Yes, yes, yes. Was and how that... happy are you that you could deliver the first Manning Cup title ever to Mona High? Well, I'm very grateful for it. I've been working hard. I, I, I pay uh... All right, Romarian, congratulations. You can go on and celebrate now. Congratulations, Manning Cup champion. Thank you very much. Yeah, Romarian, Thomas there, Manning Cup champion back to you chris taylor yeah donald well romarian thomas top season for him great performance today as i said he has a bright career ahead of him didn't score today didn't create assists but Principal put in the work Collins. at both ends of the park Cut back defensively very strong on the ball as well thomas and, and what a moment as you said filled with emotion filled with emotion romarian thomas and I'm sure all the Mona players are as well. He finished with nine goals and three assists on the season, did Thomas. But just look at these Mona players. What a feeling it must be. Yeah, it must be a, a, a really good feeling. What they've invested as far as adding to the ambition of going all the way. The 15th school to win the Manning Cup. As uh, we're waiting on the coaching staff of Mona High to arrive. 
but it must be a really good feeling for even the spectators and I'm sure there are quite a few neutrals would have picked up on this Mona High story and wanting to be a part of history tonight here at the National Stadium. Let's go back to Kimani. Yeah, thank you, Donald. I'm joined by Manning Cup champion coaching staff of Mona High. Coach Butler, I have to ask you first, how does it feel to be champion? It feels great. It feels great. It's a pod cup, a kit, Kirk, all of them. For more than the little kid in a wheelchair, this thing today, I told you we do it for you, because you we did it. Proud of a school, proud of a team, proud of Shelly, she's not here, but the whole of them did it together, one family. Coach That's Bob. what love can do, you hear you? Love conquers all things. Yeah. Speak to me a little bit more about that love and the love you have for Mona High and these young players on the pitch. What do you mean, man? I better day do that to the, 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 the Look at what they gave us out on the field today. All high, all heart, all fight. The whole 90 minutes from start to finish, the boys were trying to be first to every single ball. They wanted this and they got it. And we're yeah. so proud of them. Proud. So proud of them. Was this Mona a, Pride. Mona Pride. Was Every this time. an advertisement for just believing in the school system and what the school system can produce? This is about believing in you. This is about having faith in yourselves. This is about Jamaica out of many one people. This is about showing the rest of the footballing community that if you just believe and play to what your skills are, your strengths are as a nation, we can accomplish anything. <laughs> That's what these boys did. None of these boys were ever called for Jamaica under 20 or under 15 or under 13. Or under 17. Nobody wanted them. And look how good they are. Time this thing stop now. Time we start putting the best thing, best foot forward as a nation and pick the best players. Give everybody a chance. Put a system of play in place. And a, play, a system of development for the country. Look how Mona play. Systematic. Right, everybody coach. knew what they were needing to do. Everybody knew their role. Start to finish. Right, Coach Butler. That's a great way to end this interview. You can go on and celebrate with your team now. Congratulations. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, Coach Butler there. Very emotional, as expected in the aftermath of victory, in the aftermath of a long season, in the aftermath of years of sacrifice. And uh, he has come into the schoolboy football sphere and uh, took some time, took a couple of years, but he finally has that trophy. Yeah filled with emotion but the strongest point and a very strong point pick the best players I think that's somewhere that's something that Jamaica Jamaica especially in the youth programs have probably fallen short on over the years pick the best players irrespective of where they're from their background which schools they come from if we scout well and pick our best players then we probably will have a, a lot more, a lot better results generally as a nation. And, and sometimes it's easy to just look at statistics and say these are the best players based on what they have produced. And the but scouting system is one thing that we really have to look at to say, you know, there may be a pearl out there that's not from a traditional setup that can do a job, um, especially specific roles in uh, national teams. And yeah, I just think generally as a as a whether it's the coaching staff of the senior team or otherwise we just need to watch the football more i think at all levels i don't think that enough of that is being done at the jamaica premier league level if you want to uh, talk to the senior level and even at the schoolboy matches in terms of the persons responsible for then selecting an under 17 under 20 and so on just pick the best players without the bias and i totally agree with craig butler with that Yes, his talks generally can be very emotional and over the top at times. But that point is a very strong point in terms of our nation and the way forward. Scout our best, pick our best, produce our best. It is a wonderful story for Mona High and you have to say well tried to Hytel. I don't think they actually uh, played their A game today. and They were obviously uh, second best on the night here at the National Stadium. We take a, a quick break when we return the presentation ceremony. Stay with us.